جان بے بتہا گزر کن There's a word in Arabic called hilya. It comes up over and over again in various circumstances and is generally thought of to mean embellishments or, or ornaments and things of that kind. Well, it has a second meaning. The meaning is wasf or description. And it plays a very big part in, in early Islamic literature. And, and it plays a very big part, especially in telling us things about the Prophet. The word is sometimes un misunderstood, but uh, if you go back in the old dictionaries, you can pretty well track it down. Um, in his time, there were a number of people who knew him so well and so intimately that they would describe him to other people who hadn't seen him before. Among these people, of course, was Ali ibn Abi Talib, and another was Hind ibn Abi Hala. The, uh, when asked to describe him, they would make these, these condensed jewels of composition, which were called hilias. They were memorizable and portable, in a sense, in the memory. Now, a number of these things were used for people other than the Prophet. For instance, in the old book, Qasas al-Anbiya by Imam Tha'labi, we have a very interesting one. I'm going to work up to the Prophet from, from a different stage here. Um, where in this book, a number of them were done for other prophets, like <clears throat> Adam, Yusuf, Dawood, Suleiman, Yahya, Jesus, alayhi salam. And so here's one, here's one just to get the feel of, of how these things work. This is the one, it was, it was related by Kaab al-Ahbar, and it's about Suleiman, what he looked like, a little bit about him. It says, in my translation, <clears throat> He was of pale complexion, his body was large, very clean and beautiful. He was humble and unpretentious and associated with the poor and would keep company with them. He would say, the poor one must sit with the poor. In the days of his father Dawood's reign, Dawood would consult him because of his advanced intellect and knowledge and in spite of his, this, in spite of his young age. We also have hilyas or descriptions of the same kind for Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman and Ali. Now. The Prophet's Hilya. That's a calligraphic version of it, and I'll get to the details of it in a minute. This thing reads, pardon my Arabic, it's not that great, but An Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu kana idha wasaf al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal Lam yakun bit tawil al mumagat wala bil qasir al mutaraddid kana rab'atan min al qawmi wa lam yakun bil ja'ad al qatat wala bil sabt kana ja'adan rajilan wa lam yakun bil mutahim wala bil mukhathim وكان في الوجه تدوير أبيض مشارب أدعج عيني عيني أحدب الأشفار جليل المشاش والكتد أجرد ذو مسربة شاث الكفاني والخدمان إذا مشى يتكلأ كعندما يمشي في صبب وإذا التفت التفت معا بين كتفه خاتم النبوة وهو خاتم النبيين أجود الناس صدرا وأصدقهم لحجة وأذينهم عريكة وأكرمهم عشيرة من رآه بديهة هابه ومن خالته معرفة أحبه يقول ناعته لم أرى قبله ولا بعده مثله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم على نبي الرحمة وشفي الأمة محمد وآله وصحبه. That's the Arabic version of it. Now, I mean, let me give you now a translation of that. <coughs> It's transmitted from Ali. We know who he was. Who, when asked to describe the prophet, would say, he was not tall and stretched out, nor short and compressed. Very vivid language, these words are so rare that, that we had to recently in Istanbul make a, a, a sort of a dive back into the old dictionary so we could kind of make a little glossary just for this hilya so people could understand what it means. He was uh, medium-sized, his hair was not short and curly, nor was it lank, but in between. His face was not pudgy, but there was a bit of a roundness to it. His skin was pale, his eyes were black, he had long eyelashes, 
He was big boned with wide shoulders, large joints. He had no body hair except in the middle of his chest. He had thick hands and feet. And when he walked, he walked inclined as if descending a slope. <clears throat> he, when he looked at somebody, he would turn his whole body towards them. Between his shoulders was the seal of prophecy, the sign that he was the last of the prophets. He was the most generous hearted of men, the most truthful of them in speech, the most mild tempered of them, and the noblest of them in lineage. Whoever saw him spontaneously was in awe of him, and whoever associated with him familiarly loved him. Anyone who would describe him would say, I never saw before or after him the like of him. Now, these hilias were passed down through memory and, and, and transmission. And in the fifth, uh, what, what is the dates? In the 18th century, a calligrapher named Hafez Osman it was called the second sheikh. Calligraphers also have sheikhs. And uh, he was uh, actually the first one of the line was Sheikh Hamdallah. And he was a, a sheikh of a, of, a, of a Sufi group that specialized in archery. You know, some people have different things. And, and that group it was archery. He was a terrific shot, by the way. Um, but uh, Hafez Osman was a, was a man who, 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 when he read these things, he was uh, moved to write it into calligraphy. Previously, it was only found in the books. Like this, it was found. This particular version I just read to you comes from the uh, Shema'il of Tirmidhi, and a number of other books have very good ones, like uh, the Shifa of Qadi Ayyad, which we'll get into a little bit. Uh, and then there are a number of single, you know, transmissions and things that have uh, been joined together.